Hello, everyone. Today we're discussing the next message in the series, Let's Break the Rules. And the message this morning challenges the unspoken rule of don't think. Dan, can you summarize the main idea of that message for us as we begin today? Sure. The big idea of don't think is, is to break that don't think rule, and that is to start learning, because there's a very strong tie between thinking and learning. People who don't think don't learn, and people who don't learn are, are eventually going to be in trouble because we all need to have a learning curve. And by that, I mean, we all need to be constantly learning in order to grow. And this is really basic. This is a life skill, how to learn, how to think. If we're going to be learners, we're going to have to learn how to think. And the big idea about thinking is God gave us a brain, a mind to be able to constantly think through the true from the false because in our world in our families in our homes in our marriage whatever set of relationship you were talking about there's true and there's false and if we don't learn how to sort that through then we're going to be, be believing false and then we slip into pretending and get into other troubles so the idea behind thinking is becoming a lifelong learner so that I am able to sort through the difference between what's true and what's false. I need to renounce the false and I need to embrace the true and I need to help other people around me to follow in this trail to do away with the false and just stay with the true. So that's it in a nutshell. That's great. We, uh, I watched that message this morning um, before we started this interview just to get my mind thinking about what we were going to say. And as I was thinking about how we would conduct this interview, a song came to my mind that I was taught in Sunday school as, as a small child. And uh, one of the main lines is, obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. And I agree with that concept. I agree that God wants us to be obedient. But the process that God takes us through as people to bring us to the point where we do believe Jesus, that we do trust everything that he says, it always involves us engaging our minds and thinking. And as I've studied God's word, I've come to conclude that he is not afraid of my questions. He has the answers. He's actually not offended by my questions either. He understands all of our weaknesses as people. He understands that all the pain that has happened in each of our lives and has brought these questions to our minds. And he is not afraid to address them. So the next question I had for you, Dan, is does God ever expect us to just do it, to just listen to him? Well, that's a great question. And that was a great song too. I grew up with that song, Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. The short answer is yes, God does want us to, to obey. And the reason to obey without question is because he made us. He's the one who made the Ten Commandments and who wrote the Bible. And, and so he has every right to ask us to obey. I'd like to suggest there's another song about obedience that is worthy of consideration too. And that's the hymn, Trust and Obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And that hymn shows the connection between obedience and trusting, which we had a, a message last week about trusting. So our obedience is actually an expression of trust in, in God. And we, we grow when we trust and obey. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole thing of obedience is a relational idea. It, it's, we, are, we are showing our trust in Jesus and God when we obey what he's asked us to do. The longer answer to that question, does God ever 
uh, just tell us to obey without giving us reasons or whatever. Um, in some ways, uh, he, well, he sure does welcome our, our conversation. He welcomes our dialogue. He welcomes our question. He welcomes whatever we're feeling. If that wasn't true, then the book of Psalms wouldn't be in the Bible because the vast majority of the Psalms are Psalms about struggle, Psalms about emotional grief, lament. Um, in, you name the emotion, it's in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And so God encourages us and welcomes our dialogue when he's asking us to obey, which is every day. Um, he welcomes us to talk with him and to, and he, he will uh, communicate back with us. He has no lack of ways to dialogue with us and to assure us and to give us hope and to remind us that he is the, uh, he is the path of life and he's, he has, uh, he's given us, he has reasons behind why he's asked us to obey him. So, yeah, sometimes God asks us to do things. Very often, we know why we should obey. And so, yeah, I guess that's the answer to that question. I think that's, that's a great answer. There's two significant books in the Bible that have shaped my thinking about God's openness to us asking him questions. The first one is Habakkuk. And then it's a very short book. It's only three chapters long. And in that book, it's a dialogue, a conversation between Habakkuk and God. And in Israel's history, during this time, Israel had wandered away from God. And God was going to use the Babylonian nation to discipline Israel and to bring them back to him. And the Babylonians were an evil people. They did all kinds of horrible things. And Habakkuk could not understand how God could use these evil people to discipline the Israelites, God's people. And in the dialogue, Habakkuk asked God several questions, and God graciously and kindly answers his questions. But there's a point at the end of the book where Habakkuk, even though he doesn't really get it, he doesn't really understand, he still has to come to the point of trusting what God says and ultimately obeying because of that trust. And the other book that comes to my mind is the book of John in the New Testament. Towards the end of the book, it talks about how all the miracles that Jesus did were meant to cause us to believe that he is who he claims to be. He is God's son. He is the promised Messiah. And all through the book, he presents evidence, challenging us to engage our minds and to think through the evidence that he presents and to cause us to believe. And uh, I just love the fact that God welcomes our questions, that he's not offended by them, and he's actually willing to engage with us as people. One other thing that I'd like to, to mention here before we carry on, in terms of Jesus' grace towards us, God meets us in our need, and he extends his grace to each single person. He answers our questions, and a healthy response to God's grace is to believe and trust, which results in obedience. That process of asking questions and believing and trusting, can you expand on that anymore, Dan? Mm -hmm. We grow by asking questions. And sometimes, maybe in our childhood or at times, when we've asked questions, we have been told, don't ask questions. And sometimes we can sort of revert into shyness about asking questions because maybe we've been shut down in the past. God never shuts us down when we ask questions. And sometimes our questions that we want to ask God, we're actually asking them in our, in our fellowship. We're, we're asking them in our family. We're asking questions about the Lord, about Scripture, we're asking those questions uh, on a horizontal level. And those questions, uh, when people answer them, people who are, uh, are spiritual, resourceful people, those answers 
uh, could easily be coming from the Lord. And because the way that the, the fellowship works, the way that a community works, when, when we are growing together and we're learning together and we're searching God, we're searching scripture together, we're searching God's mind and God's heart, some of the questions we are asking are, God is giving us the answer by the answer that people are sharing with us. And sometimes the answers to our questions come right from scripture. Uh, sometimes they come from other people. Sometimes they come from uh, other, other messages that we might be hearing. God can speak to us out in the bush. I mean, God has lots of ways of answering our questions. And so I just encourage people watching this to ask questions of God. And what that may look like is asking questions of one another. Mm -hmm. And the Lord helps us to grow and to heal and to become mature when we ask questions and be a a seeker of wisdom. So I encourage you to talk about things. And that's the point of this series really is to open up the dialogue and, and think together. Um, so another point to add to that, as you're asking people for wisdom and trusting that God can speak wisdom through them, he is never, ever going to contradict what his word says. So always use God's word as a measuring stick for what people are trying to tell you. Uh, God will never, ever contradict what he's already said in his word. So true. And he does want us to engage our minds and to think. And that's one of the ways that we have to engage our minds. We have to weigh what people are saying with what God's word says, because that's the, where ultimate truth comes from. Well, thank you, Dan, for once again taking the time to speak with us on this topic. We appreciate it. And for everybody who's listening, take the time to watch the message. Let's think, and uh, you will be blessed by it. Is there anything that you'd like to add as we wrap it up here, Dan? Well, I just am so delighted that your um, people in your fellowship are interested in this series. I share in, in the message on thinking that I have thought of myself as a thinker, but I didn't really start thinking until I was 34 years old. I didn't really start growing in the Lord until I was 34 years old. And I got a learning curve that began, it went from flat to really steep. And I have been on that learning curve now for 31 years. And I never want to get off. And if I lived at age 96, which is 31 more years, uh, I want to still be learning and asking questions and thinking and reading and learning. I, I never want to stop learning. And I hope that that's true with you too. I, I think that God blesses people who want to learn. So. Amen to that. Well, thank you again, Dan, for everybody who's been listening. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep on trusting him. Amen. Lord bless you all.